Hi, how are you today, guys? My name is Rhea Cristo. Our topic for today is about the eight universal principles of quality management. We'll tackle first customer focus, number two, leadership, three, people involvement, number four, process of fraud, five, systematic of fraud, six, continual improvement, and seven, factual approach to decision making and the last one mutual beneficial supplier relations so what are the universal quality management principles are where they came from they're set out of the international standards for organization called name iso which has been developing guideline principles to protect businesses from fatal errors since its foundations in 1947. ISO 9001 is the catchy name for a quality management system, QMS, standards model, which was introduced in 1994. The most current versions, which came into force in 2015, was adapted to address new regulatory requirements and improve on the previous model. The QMS standards apply worldwide under applications and overseen by the ISO Technical Committee 176. All these numbers are starting to make sense now, right? The committee also decides when to update the standards and writes new guidelines roughly every three years. The principles set out by the ISO 9001 were invented in the 1990s by a small group of experts who created them using the philosophical teaching and business know-how of the previous century. Let's take a look at each of them in detail. Principle one, customer focus. The first and arguably most important principle argues that a business wouldn't exist without its customers. Therefore, organizations should strive to understand their current and future customers in order to better meet their requirements and expectations. Key benefits of cultivating good customers relationships include an increased market share and boost to revenue, as well as improved customer loyalty. If you are seen as understanding and reacting appropriately to customer demand, the success of your business is pretty much guaranteed. So it's worth paying close attention to this principle. Principle two, leadership. This principle extols the virtues of strong, purposeful, and unifying leadership. Leadership are responsible for creating a productive and progressive business environment. They also are in the charge of ensuring that future hires maintain that atmosphere. Implementing this principle in your workplace relies upon having an establishment, established vision for the business, as well as the right leaders in place to promote that vision to the, right, to the rest of the, of the team. Spending some time getting this right from the get-go will save your time and stress in the future. Principle 3. People Involvement Just as your business will be nowhere without a customer base, it also wouldn't get very far without a balance. Multi-skilled team either. Employees at every level of their organizations are crucial to its success, and this principle is all about recognizing that. As an employer, it's vital to ensure that your team are motivated and engaged, not just in their day-to-day -day responsibilities, but also in the company as a whole for this to happen. Staff need to understand the importance of their role and how it fits into wider company objectives, as well as take responsibility for any problems that might impede them from doing their job to the best of their abilities. Principle four, process of fraud. 
A process-driven approach can help companies to avoid logistical problems that often stem from confusion over the right way to go about things. It also future-proofs your business as having set process ensures that there's no moment of flat panic when a key team member moves on, leaving everyone in the dark about key elements of their job. Developing processes for every area of your business, from sales to marketing, finance to HR, will ensure that resources are used are used most effectively, resulting in cost-effective and consistent results. It also allows you to dictate time and attention to bigger and more exciting tasks. Principle 5. Systematic Approach to Management this principle is linked to the previous one and argues that identifying, understanding, and managing processes using a clear system will help to streamline your business. By ensuring that team members are dedicating the right amount of attention to key tasks, you'll eliminate wasted time and make your business more efficient. A systematic approach also allows everyone to have access to every stage of certain processes and stay up to date with progress. Plus, it looks great for pros prospective new clients when your business is organized win-win. Principle 6. Continual Improvement As the old age goes, if you're not going forwards, you're going backwards. A business should always be pushing for improvements because if you're not, you can beat that your competitors will be. Continual progress is a permanent goal of any successful organization. Take a look at the world top 10 most prosperous organizations and you can guarantee that they have entire teams dedicated to ensuring that they are always on to the next thing. Commitment to improve allow, allow also you to be the market leader. I shall be the one setting the agenda rather than playing catch up to your competitors. Principle 7. Factual Approach to Decision Making This principle states that effective decisions are made based on rational analysis of data whilst a gut feeling can be useful in some situations. It won't really stand up when you're expla explaining to your board of investors why your profits are down by 10% this year. Before making any business decisions, big or small, ensure that you have all the facts. That way, if you're ever questions about why you made a certain decisions, or asked to prove how that decision benefits your business, you have all the data at your fingertips to fall back on. This principle also relies upon having access to reliable and accurate data, another vital aspect for a modern day business. Principle eight, mutually beneficial supplier relations. Okay. So you get a fantastic management system, excellent customer relationship, and a comprehensive business plan. There's one thing missing. What are you delivering to your customers? Whether your business provides goods or services to customers, it's likely you rely on some sort of supplier. This principle dictates that the relationship between your company and any supplier must be mutually beneficial in order to add value to both parties. It allows both, both of you to react more quickly and flexibly to customer demand when things are smooth and harmonious between you, as well as making it easier to negotiate on costs. Thank you for your watching and thank you for your like, share and subscribe. So please follow my YouTube channel and my Facebook page. Bye-bye.